How are you guys doing today? Uh, this is Van Damage. I'm about to show you my Pelican Case Boombox. Uh, I'm going to take you through it, step by step, what I did. Um, give you a good idea of what parts I used, how much they all cost all together. And, uh, you know, help you out if you, need a, if you have any questions and feel like doing one of these yourself. So, this right here is a Pelican 1200 case. It's uh, not the biggest case in the world. I was only able to use three and a half inch speakers on it. Uh, these are Kicker DSC 35s. Uh, I was able to acquire these for about $28 per pair. Uh, they fit on here really nicely. I had to drill the holes out and then cut it with a saw as well. Uh, now these cases are very durable. I've accidentally knocked it off my desk while working on it a couple of times. And you know even throwing it in my car, taking it to work, last it up against that, but you take a saw to it and it cuts through it like paper. So, durable, sturdy, doesn't last against a saw. But, it's uh, perfect for mounting things too. Uh, anybody who's used one of these or seen them knows that there's really no loose moving parts on it, so as far as rattling and whatnot's concerned, you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, as you can see, got my on-off switch here. Just a uh, simple toggle switch. Turns it off and on. And I've also put a voltmeter on here. Now, this is my first project, so I'm pretty sure there's some of you looking at it going, oh, that's really off-center. But I really don't care. First one, gave it a try, and it worked. Uh, now, this, uh, it's reading at 12.6 right now. Now, I've uh, looking at these online, trying to see, you know, how different people have done it different ways. They've all said, you know, it reads up to about 12.8 when fully charged, and then it'll drop to about an 8 whenever it's needing a charging again. Uh, I've actually had mine on for about 8 hours off and on for the past 4 or 5 days. The last time I charged it was on Sunday, and today is Thursday. So that'll tell you how long I've actually been running this. Uh, I was able to put in a female 2.1 by 55 millimeter plug. Uh, this is basically where I charge it from. Um, out of the whole project, this was the biggest pain to do. Uh, whenever you buy these, you'll probably notice if you use one of these cases that the threads are not as long as this case is thick. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain to work around. I actually had to wallow that out a little bit and you know cut into the case trying to you know make it a little bit thinner just so I could get the plug and thread it on uh, one thing I have thought of after the fact is that probably an easier way to do it is to take a hole saw cut a larger hole get a small piece of metal like a thin metal sheet cut out a square to it mount this to the metal sheet and then mount the sheet to the box uh, whenever I do my next one that's how I'm gonna do it I believe that will be a little bit easier than trying to drill this out and make it a little bit thinner. So, just to give anybody a heads up, that's anyone who has a problem with that, that's my idea on how to do it. If you have a better idea, let me know because I was cursing this box left and right trying to get a charging port on it. Shut this off for now. I'm about to open it up. But, uh, here's the auxiliary cable. This is where... You know, I plug in my MP3 device, whatever I'm using. Uh, this was easier. You know, it's got longer threads on it, so that was simple as drilling a hole, taking two seconds to drill the hole and 30 seconds to put that on and, you know, make sure it's tightened down enough. Again, I love these cases. Two, you know, two connections right there. Just open it up, and then you can see the inside. Uh, nothing rattles in here, which is good. I've got everything mounted down the way in a way that nothing will move So you can see the battery. Uh, this is why my battery life is so long. This is a 12 volt direct current 9 amp hour battery um, It's it's definitely overkill for this project. I probably should have gone smaller But you know what it does the job that I want it to do and it does it fairly well. So let me get in on these, how I've got it all wired up. I know it looks a little messy here. This is just all my grounding cables that I've got uh, from a couple of different things that I have to bring to a common ground. But here's that female adapter, the 2.1 by 
I uh, actually had to solder wire to it because all it was was the adapter itself, a female adapter. Uh, whenever you start wiring these up, it's best to get a voltmeter, figure out where the negative and positive is going, and wire it accordingly. But as you can see what I did, this is the positive wire here. I ran it back around the battery, just kind of slid it in there, there's a little bit of space so you know it fit perfectly, and just brought it out and around the uh, mounting bracket that I got above it to the positive terminal. And from the positive terminal, I ran it down over the uh, amplifier. Uh, since most of my wires were kind of hanging out in the middle, I made them a little bit longer and then just, you know, zip tied them all together on one, you know, massive strand of wiring. Probably not the correct way to do it. I might be getting a little, you know, a little feedback from it, but, you know, this was the easiest way I could think of getting it done. Uh, what I did was, whenever I brought the wire down, I kind of, you know, backtracked it again this way, plugged it into a 10 amp fuse. Uh, that's just so that if I have it plugged into the wall and say there's a power surge, which where I'm at right now, sometimes we do get a little bit of a surge every now and then. So if I happen to have it plugged in, charging the battery, you know, I'm not going to accidentally ruin anything in here whenever, you know, that were to happen, if it were to happen. But from the uh, fuse here, I just ran it up to the toggle switch, which you saw me playing with a little bit earlier. Uh, ran it up here. Uh, here's the power going out of it. Uh, this is where I actually connected the voltmeter. I have it after the toggle switch. That way, you know, whenever I have everything shut off, it's not going to drain the battery to let me know how much life I have left on the battery. Uh, figured it would be a little bit better, easier that way, and extend the life, which it definitely has. So, connected both of these uh, power cables here and ran it down to feed the amplifier, which is a Lapai amplifier. Uh, it puts out about 15, 20 watts per channel, which is more than enough than what I need for these speakers. Uh, it puts out a loud sound. Uh, like the first day I brought it into work to show my coworkers, so say, hey, look, this is what we can use to listen to music while we're on the job. We don't have to worry about ruining our personal speakers. And uh, one of the guys was talking about, you know, some story that he had, and, you know, just kind of as a joke, I was like, oh, tell me more, tell me more, and cranked up the volume and was able to drown him out and the people about 10 feet away from us completely out. So this thing gets really, really loud off of a little bit of power. It's freaking amazing. But that actually prompted him, he's asking me to help him build his own now. So, you know lots of projects here in the future but anyways from the like I said from the toggle switch I got it powering the amplifier uh, the amplifier is a lapai I uh, bought this for about $20 uh, you can get them cheaper than that uh, I wanted one with a little bit more options on it and it for what I paid this is actually exactly what I needed the speakers required 20 watt RMS I believe it was I'm not entirely sure what that I don't know too much about speakers to tell you the truth but I, was, I know enough to know how to wire these in and what I needed to power them without actually overpowering them. Uh, so this is about $20. You can get them cheaper. I've seen them about $8, $10. Uh, this has a USB port here. So in the future, I'm actually going to attach a USB cable here and put a charging adapter on the outside. That way, I can charge it off of my amplifier so that you know whenever I'm listening to music, I don't run out of things to play music before you know this thing dies and also I have a spot over here that I'm gonna add Bluetooth later so that way I can just wirelessly connect to it uh, up here is an RCA to auxiliary adapter cable so as you can see I got a male adapter here that plugs into the auxiliary adapter on the outside of the box which I was able to screw directly to it so just ran it around plugged it in it works really well uh, this was about eight dollars ten dollars for both of these um, the plug I, that I have powering it is also in a 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter I was able to get a pack of ten of these for I want to say six seven dollars 
and it comes pre-wired so you have your normal red wire for positive black wire for negative uh, like I said this only came with the plug itself no extra wiring so you have to wire that in uh, as far as the negative or ground wires I ran everything to a common ground over here which is actually the bracket holding the battery in uh, you know everything's running to it from the battery to the amp to the voltmeter here uh, really easy to do uh, let's see the battery itself cost me maybe twenty two dollars I'm probably already said this once or twice but yeah I'll go over everything just so you all know what it is so about twenty two dollars for this battery again it's a twelve volt nine amp battery nine amp hour uh, lasts a long time like I said uh, the kicker speakers were about twenty eight dollars a pair uh, you can find them a lot cheaper than that. Just depends on the quality of speaker you want. I wanted the higher quality, so that's why I went with the kickers. Uh, let's see, the toggle switch was a couple of dollars, just you know, three, four dollars at my local electronics store. I was able to pick it up at voltmeter. Uh, I got that on Amazon for three or four dollars each. I got a pair of them because I'm planning on doing another one of these. Uh, the case was thirty-eight dollars. I was able to find some of these like uh, on eBay, able to bid on one. I got it for about $25 there, and I'm going to turn it into one of these as well. Uh, but with all the wiring, all the adapters I needed, the plugs, it cost around $200. Uh, like I said, you can get cheaper cases. You don't have to go with Pelican. You can go with, like, say, an ammo can will work as well. That was actually what I was originally going to use. But with an ammo can, you're going to need to use like Dynamat to kind of soundproof it a little bit and make the metal a little bit sturdier because it's real thin metal. And I didn't really want to get into all that. I figured Pelican case would be my best bet. It's sturdy, strong, and it's the exact size I needed. Uh, let me show you the power adapter, actually, that I use. I bought a Yuasa 1 amp automatic battery charger. Now, the reason why I got this is because the battery that's in here is basically a car, like a very tiny car battery. Uh, I believe I saw on the website that they use it for like sea doos or, you know, ATVs, stuff like that. So I got this charger because what it does is whenever it's fully charged, it will stop charging it. It will stop sending power to the battery. That way you don't overpower it, you don't ruin your battery and wear down the life of it. And it also tells you if there's a fault with it as well. So I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, this was $31, $32 for it. So like I said, a bunch of these parts you can get a lot cheaper. Like, you don't have to go with this. Uh, I just went with it because it has, you know, more protection for it. It'll extend the life of my battery, hopefully. And let me find... There it is. <clears throat> and, uh... But one thing with it... Uh, when you buy it, it comes with alligator clips and these things right here, which you basically screw to the top of the terminals on your battery to charge it up. Now, because I don't have a battery that actually uses this, I clipped it off at the end of that adapter and wired on a 2.1 by 5.5 male adapter plug to it so I can plug it directly to this unit. I've tested it out. It does charge it. It does work. I haven't fried anything in here yet. But here's what I had to do. I had to, like I said, I had to clip off those adapters, plugs, terminal, whatever you want to call them. And I soldered this guy on here, which I basically cut the wire to because this is a thicker wire. I wanted to cut it off and make sure that I used it the way it looked like it needed to be used. Uh, with this, the outside of it is the negative side. And then you have a terminal that comes down a little bit. And you want to solder on your wire to this. You don't want loose connections or the chance that it will become loose so solder it on definitely make sure that you got that good connection to it and another reason I like it is because in line with the positive you have another fuse so it's a little redundant you got a fuse in here a fuse right here but you know the more protection you have for it the better and longer it'll last but like I said I had to modify this a little bit I know it looks difficult okay sorry about that my other camera actually ran out of power uh, like I was saying, I know it looks a little complicated, but this is actually really simple to do. Once you clip the wires, you know, it's pre-separated with the brand that I got, so you can see what it is that you need to do. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much the end of it. I, camera, wish I hadn't cut off right there at the end. 
but you know it's a simple easy project uh, I really had a lot of fun doing this I was able to complete this or I would have been able to complete it over the weekend but yeah I d had to wait on a couple of parts to come in uh, like the volt meter right here but once I got finished I'm very very happy with this uh, it's an easy project to do like I said uh, it's a lot of fun like I was able to take this into work a couple times show, show it off uh, they were impressed with it I got a couple people wanting me to help them build their own give them parts lists and little pointers here and there and help them build it so you know it's a lot of fun to be able to help out like that and plus this is just something really cool to carry around with you show off uh, you know if you, anybody has any questions comments you know, if you want to know, want any tips on how to build it, where to get parts from, like I said, most everything I got for this, I got off of Amazon. Uh, I did get a couple pieces from, you know, local hardware stores and whatnot just because I, I got impatient. Like, at one point, I had everything but these two pieces right here, and I really wanted to try it out, so I ended up going and buying the toggle switch. But you can get pretty much everything off of Amazon, like anything else nowadays. So, yeah, if you have any questions... I uh, want to know how I pulled any of this off, uh, any wiring concerns you may have, may not have, uh, or just want to say, hey, that was an awesome project, you know, just comment below, let me know what you think, and uh, let you know, I'll be doing some more videos later, I've got a couple more of these I'm going to build, so one of them is going to be a monster of a boombox, like the size of a normal, uh, one is going to be the size of my desk using a lot of speakers, and... I'm planning on drowning out whatever sound could possibly come around with that. So I'll definitely post that video up once I get it done. Uh, oh, and one other tip. I am going to be putting grills on here. I just don't have the spacers to actually make it connect to the box because they're a little short. But eventually I will have you know, something like this attached to it. That's actually the one I'm going to use. I've got two of them. But I'm just missing some spacers for connecting it to the case right now so that's why those aren't there but uh, just let me know what you think have a good one